Welcome to our lecture online. Here is another interesting problem. Let's say we have a railroad car with a mass of 6,000 kilograms that's rolling down the railroad track towards one of those safety mechanisms, a bumper system that consists of two springs. A smaller spring that's engaged first, that has a spring constant of 600 newtons per meter, and a stronger spring that engages after the train has gone an additional 30 centimeters with a spring constant of 3400 newtons per meter. The car comes to a complete stop after making contact, after making contact with the first spring, it completely stops 50 centimeters later, which means the small spring gets compressed 50 centimeters and the big spring gets compressed 20 centimeters. The question was, what was the initial velocity of the car so that the car will stop after 50 centimeters. Hmm, how do we do that? Well, again, we use the energy equation. We say that any work put into the system plus any initial potential energy plus any initial kinetic energy is equal to potential energy final plus kinetic energy final plus any energy loss due to friction and things like that. All right, let's see what we have. Any work put into the system? No, we don't. Zero work. Potential energy initial, no, the car is just rolling, but it does have kinetic energy, one half, and that would be mv initial squared. So that would be the initial energy of the system, the rolling car. The final energy is potential energy, sure enough, there's two springs. It would be one half k1 x1 squared plus one half k2 x2 squared, where x1 and x2 are the individual amounts that they were compressed. So x1 would be this distance right here, and x2 would be this distance right here. This would be x2, and this here would be x1. Oh, nope, that's not x1. x1 is the total distance, so this here would be x1, and that's x2. That's a better way to look at it. So the first spring compresses 50 centimeters. The second spring only compresses the difference between 50 and 30, which is 20 centimeters. So this is equal to 20 centimeters. And this here is equal to 50 centimeters. Let's write it down so we don't get confused. All right. So that would be the potential energy plus zero kinetic energy, because then the blocks are no longer moving. And there's no friction at all, no energy loss. So let's call that zero as well. And so what are we trying to find? Is we're trying to find the original velocity. So calculating V initial, since it's squared, we're going to take the square root of both sides. So we have V initial is equal to, now moving the M across will become one over M, so it's the square root of one over M times what's left. So we have a K1 X1 squared plus K2 x2 squared. And that will give us the original velocity of the railroad car. So coming over here where we have more room, v initial equals the square root of 1 over m, which is 1 over 6,000, times k1, which is 1,600, multiplied times x1 squared, and x1 is going to be 0 0.5 meters squared because we have to convert to meters plus the second spring, which has a spring constant of 3,400, times 0 0.2 squared. And I guess I should close the bracket. There we go. Now we're ready to calculate that velocity. So 0.5 squared times 1,600. That is 400. All right, so let's put in some intermediate values. Sometimes that helps when we mess up on our calculations. So V initial is equal to the square root of 1 over 6,000 times 400 plus uh, 0.2 squared times 3,400. That would be 136, like this equals, then we divide that by 6,000, equals, and now we take the square root of that, and it says that V initial is equal to 0 0.30 meters per second, a little less than one-third of a meter per second, and therefore those springs are able to handle that car and bring it to a complete stop 
after 50 centimeters, and that's how it's done.